I would say my proudest moment was when I finally finished everything and I got to delivering um, the plants because it felt like that was the end of the first phase almost of planning and uh, trying to figure everything out and starting a new phase of uh, actually reaching out to people, um, getting stuff done and um, really starting the project. Hi everyone, today I am joined by the one and only Livia. Livia, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I am also doing pretty good. Thanks so much for asking. So, Livia started a program called Sprouts for Sprouts and she's currently at Exeter, as you can tell by her little dorm room. So that's very exciting. But yeah, Livia, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, how you got started with this initiative idea? Like Kevin said, I'm at Exeter. Um, I'm a prep right now, so it's like a freshman. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, and I think nature or like plants really have been a big part of my life um, or childhood, especially because my grandparents, they would have their own gardens and I would help out, or we would go hiking as a family usually. So it's always just been a big part of my life. And my parents are also involved in like the science field. So I've always been passionate about that as well. I think in middle school, I really developed like this love for um, understanding climate change and trying to help out with my community. Um, I've done a bunch of other programs like it. So I did want to try and start something um, by myself and try to make change in my own way. Um, especially as a kid, I tried to be as independent as I could, but it was really difficult for me to do that. I think I just wasn't taught enough of how to do my research or how to reach out to other people and understand the current issues. Reading the news was always tough and I didn't know where to go. So I just tried to start this initiative to help other people who might have the same interest as me. Wow. So yeah, you, you talked about some pretty serious pain points. I know when you were building out your initiative, something that we talked about is all these scientific terms or papers, or even sometimes current news events can be hard for a young student to digest. So it's very noble that you're trying to solve this problem. But maybe you can tell us more about the specifics of Sprouts for Sprouts. Like what was the timeline? How many students did you have? What was your metrics for success? All that good stuff. Yeah. So I found myself um, a bit lost in the beginning. I was still trying to formulate like a plan in a timeline. The final product really was I would be sending out two plants and I specifically chose them to be easy to propagate so that as a beginner or as like a student, it would be easy to grow these plants and watch them grow along uh, alongside these students and for also for them to share them with other people and reach out um, to others. And I also started developing like a newsletter and breaking down um, important ideas so that um, younger students and kids can understand that. And also just guides to like how to research or how to take care of their plants so everything um, becomes a lot easier. I guess the first two weeks was mostly calling people and trying to make my program better seeing how I could improve because I hadn't really talked about it to that many other people and it was nice to get some other input. As I was developing all of this, I think it definitely got tougher to get more referrals and to talk to more people. So after a while, I just started focusing more on the actual execution. I had to buy plants and pots and all of that. And I would say my proudest moment was when I finally finished everything and I got to delivering um, the plants because it felt like that was the end of the first phase almost of planning and uh, trying to figure everything out and starting an, a new phase of uh, actually reaching out to people, um, getting stuff done and um, really starting the project. I think when I finally got to talk to my students for the first time, and seeing how what they felt of everything and if they were liking it i guess just sending stuff out um to know that i was doing something that's amazing can you what did, what did your students say after they got their plants and when they were taking care of them and also how did you find these students how did you i mean you mentioned you made calls but like how did you get 
people's phone numbers, all that. How did you do that? Yeah, um, I chose students that were around my sister's age, so that made it um, a little easier. So that's around middle school or elementary school. Um, so I called around their friends and some of my friends who had siblings and my immediate circle and then their circles. I tried to hand deliver everything because we were all so close together and it was nice to finally see other people. <laughs> I think they were very excited to receive everything. I put them in like little pots and I spray painted um, stuff around them and I think I think they were happy to receive it. I always feel happy when I receive like a gift or something or something new or even to learn from. So I hope they did too. That is so sweet. I have another question, which would be more focused on, on you, right? As the organizer, as the kind of like entrepreneur, how do you think you grew throughout the course of this program? Do you think like it made you get out of your comfort zone? Yeah, definitely. I think my comfort zone before I did the program and compared to now, there's definitely a big difference. I'm more comfortable talking to new people, making phone calls especially. I think I was a bit nervous at first because I couldn't see their faces and how they were reacting. And um, those big pauses uh, was a bit scary for me. But now I hope that I'm more well-spoken <laughs> uh, when I'm talking to people and that my ideas when I'm coming up with them are more well put together. And I think also my writing and researching to make the newsletter, I think that improved and getting all those things done and uh, designing the format and everything. It made me proud of my progress and, and it was almost a confidence boost, yeah. That is so cool. Yes, I would, I mean, I watched Olivia from, from the beginning, day one to pitch night and all of that. And I think that Livia's growth was immense. Probably she grew the most out of all the rookies that were part of the incubator. And also Livia was at the disadvantage because she didn't, hadn't seen any of the webinars or stuff like that. I should have recorded them and sent them to you. But she managed, she executed, and she did the sales. Now, Livia, what do you have planned for the future? Are you also planning on running this program again or doing something different? I think I do want to continue this because it is a cause I'm um, fairly passionate about. So I think along with the schoolwork and everything that's happening right now, I'll do my best to um, keep on developing everything. I did mention like a website last time. So I switched over to a different host or something. Um, so I'm trying to make it a little more professional, uh, more detailed, um, informative, and I think that's going to take a bit of time. Sounds like a plan. Well, that's pretty much all the questions that I had, and I think that's all the time that we have. Uh, I don't want to, I know you're super busy at Exeter, all these math problems they have you doing in 23x. I want to let you <laughs> go to sleep at a reasonable hour, so we will end it here. Thank you so much for your time and we will catch you guys next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.